I just wanted to do a quick video on setting a static IP in CentOS Linux 8. IP. So here we go. We're going to use the same virtual machine that we've used previously. And uh, what I did was I brought it up in VMware Fusion on the Mac. And I'm going to log in as root. And you want to do this as an administrator. Um, either use an account that's administrative or just use uh, root. So we're going to log in as root. You can see that I was in here uh, actually earlier tonight. So uh, first thing you want to do is you want to see what the state of your interfaces uh, currently is. So what you can do is you can run a command called IP ADDR or IP address. It'll list you all the interfaces that are currently active and have some form of address. So you can see the first one, it says we have a loopback, which is uh, basically the local host, the machine that, that I'm currently using. And then the second interface, uh, titled ENS33, actually has an IP address of 192.168.93.138. I keep trying to use my mouse, so this is VMware, so it doesn't really work except off the screen. So this line here where my little hand is, is what I'm referring to, and this line is the IP address. So this is DHCP, uh, the, the IP address ending 138. It did pull it from VMware. I currently have this uh, NATed through uh, VMware's um, you know network interfaces. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Network Manager CentOS 8 relies solely on Network Manager. You can still modify configuration scripts, but you no longer have the legacy services that run the network anymore. They've removed all of that stuff. Those features were deprecated as of this version. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the script, and this method is literally just the command line version and I'm not going to go into Network Manager, I'm not going to go into the NM tools, uh, command line tools. That's a whole nother video that, that can be made from just that alone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set an IP address the way that's worked for me for the count list of Linux servers that I work with on a daily basis. And they're still holding on through restarts and everything so that's that's the ticket you want to make sure that your ip address can persist through a state change but whether it's a network state change or a server state change like a reboot or or something or a shutdown or some kind of a issue that forced the the change to happen so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the configurations folder so we're going to change directory to the etsy uh, syscon sysconfig uh, network scripts folder okay now that we're in it let's take a look I'm just going to use the ls-alh command we can see here that we have one interface configuration that matches our ENS33 network interface so what we're going to do is I'm going to use my favorite editor which is nano and I'm actually going to just use my tab to autocomplete the name that's actually how I got the path out there too uh, was I just used tab to autocomplete it we're gonna hit enter now you can see that the reason why I was in here earlier was to save you guys from having to watch me type basically this is the configuration that's read in when the network service starts up for this particular interface. Each interface has its own configuration that is uh, denoted with if CFG dash the name of the interface. So in this case it's ENS33. That's what VMware gave my virtual machine so we're going to keep that. Um, the first thing you want to do is to get rid of the DHCP uh, boot protocol because we want this to be none there's three uh, options that you can put under boot protocol none boot p or dhcp so we're just going to put none 
but since we're not doing boot p or dhcp we just put none and in an effort to save you guys some uh some time i have just already put this information in this is just some sample information that i am going to uncomment the reason why it was a different color was because it was commented out every time you have the pound symbol and i can't remember the name of that pound symbol i used to know it in high school but it eludes me now kids these days call it a hashtag i still call it a pound symbol from the old telco days basically what you have to do is you have to append the information that's necessary for your network so in this case we have uh, you can see my blinking uh, cursor ip addr equals an IP address. I just picked one. Nothing crazy. You want to specify the net mask, also known as the network mask. Uh, so this is a 255.255.255.0. And then you have the gateway, something that I put in. Please make sure that the IPs are what you need them to be, or all of your work here will be in vain. Uh, DNS 1 and 2 now you can have multiple DNS servers. I'm not sure if there's a limit, but I've configured four DNS servers on one server and they worked out great. So I know you can have more than that. And you can append more information to this. If you go to the uh, CentOS, um, I guess, admin guide or user's guide, there's a whole list of um, arguments that you can put into this configuration that the system will read in. I know you can put in the search base. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit uh, Control X, which is the uh, nano hotkey to quit and exit. So I'm going to save the modified buffer. Yes, keep the same name, hit enter. And now what you're going to see is if I type IPADDR, Oh, look at that. The old IP address is still there. Anybody know what we forgot to do? That's right. If you said that all changes require a restart of a network interface, you want a Starbucks gift card. That's exactly what we need to do. We need to run a command that will essentially reboot the interfaces. So in this case, we're just going to say if down, and then the name of the interface which was ENS33 and then I'm going to use something I like to use which is the the double ampersand and the double ampersand basically allows you to string two commands in one line so basically first thing it'll do is it'll run this command and then it'll run this command so essentially, I just gave it a restart command as opposed to a down and then wait for it to go down and then up to come back up. This is great if you're working on a system through like SSH, like Secure Shell, or through the network. Because if you if down a network interface that you're currently connected to, you will lose your session. It will literally happen just like that. And then you will physically have to go to the server, plug in a keyboard, and display, and all that stuff to bring it back up. And uh, you may want to try this, because it may still disconnect you, and then it'll run the second command to bring the interface back up. I just don't know if through SSH it'll, it'll kill it. I'm directly on the console here, so we're going to restart this. Okay. So it was successfully deactivated and it was successfully activated. And then if we go to IP ADDR again, we note that now we have a new IP address. And that's pretty much it. And here as a bonus, uh, you can see that I have a, a custom host name set. I just looked at that. I'm going to give you a one-liner on how to change that. So if you type host name CTL set host and I'm trying to type like as cleanly as possible so I don't have to like go back and um, delete and then retype it.
Oops. And see, I did it anyway. <laughs> it's supposed to be set host name. So now if we do just host name, you will see that the domain changed from DNS01 or the host name changed from DNS01 dot sixfootnetworks.com to sample.domain.com. So I'm actually going to undo that so you will see me type this again. In fact, I will just go up There we go. Now, if we do host name, that is now the current name. So now you know how to set an IP address and to set your the host name of your system. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for sticking around with me. And until the next time, we'll see you later. Happy holidays, happy new year to my viewers, to my friends, and my family. Until next time. Bye-bye.